Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, agenda review. Anything to add to the agenda? Nothing to add. Okay, nothing to add. Well, thank you, Kathy. Um, okay, our first uh, first action tonight would be to approve the minutes. Uh, some of these minutes go back a ways. Um, June second, uh, 2022, Academic Affairs Committee uh, report. Uh, we haven't been able to have uh, a majority of those members present in the past. Do I hear any motion to approve the minutes uh, from June 2nd, uh, 6th? It's been moved by Charlene, seconded by. Who else is at that meeting? Hang on just a second. We have, one, we have one copy. We had so many minutes. Who, we do we know who was at that meeting? June June sixth at that meeting was uh, Tim Eldridge, Stephanie King, Jim Pittman, and Charlene Seibel. I'll second the motion. So it's been moved and moved by uh, Char uh, Charlene and seconded by Jim Pittman to approve the minutes of the June sixth Academic Affairs Committee meeting. Do I hear any discussion? So if none, uh, the, four, the three members that are currently here, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those minutes are approved. Um, the minutes of the, uh, uh, or the student hearing minutes uh, of June 20th. Again, the members that were present at, the, at that meeting. Okay, that was, uh, attending that meeting was uh, Brody Deshaies, uh, Dr. James Manning, Charlene Seibel, Dana Streeter, and myself. So Charlene uh, moved, moved those minutes. Uh, who seconded it? Okay, Dana second. Um, any discussion on those? Okay, all those in favor, uh, be, between Brody, Charlene, Dana, and myself, all those in favor? Uh, opposed? Chair votes aye as well, thank you. Building and maintenance meeting of August 1st. Uh, members present at that meeting were Dr. Jim Manning, Dana Streeter, Brody Deshaies, uh, the uh, administrator, and I was there um, as a board member as well. So would I hear a motion to approve? I'll make the, is this on? Hello? Okay. You have to. Okay, motion by Brody. Yeah. And uh, Dana, would you second those? Dana seconded. Um, okay, between uh, Dana, Brody, and myself, all those in favor? Brody? Aye. You got it. And I vote aye as well. Those minutes are also approved. <clears throat> okay, the next set of meetings is the uh, special school board meeting on August 11th. That was the meeting to uh, interview and uh, appoint a uh, school board member to take uh, Tim Eldridge's place. Uh, those present at that meeting was Brody Deshaies, Stephanie King, Dr. James Manning, Jim Pittman, Charlene Seibel, and myself. Uh, Dana and also arrived at 625 that day. Uh, Kelly Tiffinen from Middleton was also present at that meeting. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, August 11th meeting to appoint a new school board member. So, so moved. moved. Moved by Jim Pittman. Second. Seconded by Brody. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the August 11th special meeting to approve, appoint a new school board member, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Chair votes aye as well. The next set of, set of minutes are the academic affairs meeting uh, on August 15th prior to our school board meeting. 
the, those present were Stephanie King and Jim Pittman. Uh, those are the only two members there. Do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? You so moved. moved and by, I'll second. Moved by, <laughs> moved by. <laughs> I'll, I'll be abstaining. And uh, Charlene's going to abstain. Three members on that committee, so a majority and a quorum is two. Uh, all those in favor of approving those minutes, uh, Stephanie and Jim? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay, it's those minutes are also approved. And the last set of minutes are our school board meeting on, on August 15th. And those present, Brody Deshaies, Wendy Fenderson, Stephanie King, Dr. Jim Manning, Jim Pittman, Dana Streeter, and myself. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Okay, we have to make a motion first to approve it then. Yes. And I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Well, I think we can go either way. Yeah, I think we normally yeah, make the motion and then ask for uh, any revisions before okay, we take so I'll make the motion. Okay. Discussion. Okay. Second, anyone? I'll second. Okay, second by Jim Pittman. Okay, any uh, corrections, additions? Corrections? I, just, I just wanted to make a correction spelling that first name. It's with an I-E, not beginning. Brody, I-E. That's all. Got it. Okay, with the correction, uh, any, uh, any other comments? Okay, all those uh, in favor of approving the minutes of August 15th, signal by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Those minutes are approved. And I will abstain. Oh, I'm sorry. Charlene's abstaining because she was not there. Thank you. Sorry about that. And um, the manifest approvals for this evening, the manifest totals for payroll, are $1,807,075.93. Uh, that's accounts payable, I'm sorry. Uh, the payroll uh, for this period is $1,590,320.45 for a total manifest being signed tonight of $3,397,396.38. Do I hear a motion to approve signing those manifests? So moved. Moved by Brody. Second. Seconded by Jim Pittman. All those in favor? Uh, let's go. Uh, Dana? Hi. Who's next to Dana? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Tom? Uh, yeah. Brody? Aye. Uh, Stephanie? Aye. Charlene? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Chair votes aye as well. Manifests are approved. Okay, it's uh, time for public input. If somebody would like to speak tonight, uh, please go to the uh, mic in the center, state your name and your town that you're from. Uh, if not, uh, we'll, move right, we'll move on to uh, our student representative report. Uh, anyone interested in public input? Okay, seeing none, we will have additional public input at the end of the meeting, um, and you'll have an opportunity to speak then if you'd like to. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to introduce, uh, uh, yes, Mar Marcella, Marcella, Danito, uh, is that okay? Uh, who is our new school board representative? And uh, thank you for being here. There's a switch right on top. If you move it, it will turn green on you. I think. Hello. It is? <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Marcella Donito, and I am a st senior student athlete here at Kingswood. I have been voted in by my peers to assume this position as a student representative to the school board, and I am happy to be here. The freshmen at Kingswood are becoming more familiar with the school. One way we try to help ease their transition is by having selected students give task talks. This allows for the underclassmen to ask any questions about what high school is like in a smaller setting. Additionally, Kingswood students are looking forward to homecoming this year, and in order to prepare, each class in student council is coming up with their own hallway designs. The homecoming dance will be on October 8th. Theater will be putting on Monty Python and the Holy Grail this year. As for sports, girls soccer just won 2-0 playing Plymouth away. We play again this Thursday at home against Spalding. Boys soccer won their last game at Milford this past Friday and play again this Wednesday at Bow. 
Field hockey plays this Wednesday at Oyster River. Golf has their next match tomorrow at Timberlane. Volleyball is currently 3-0 and have their next game this Thursday at Kennett. Cross Country has had two meets so far and they run again on the 24th in Manchester. Football's first home game is this Friday against Kearsarge and is led by new head coach, Coach McCullough. And in order to prepare for the game, the school, the school club, Knights Against Hunger, is collecting donated food for the local food pantry in school and at the game. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much for your report and thanks for being here. Okay, uh, next up is the superintendent's report. So Caroline. Thank you. Uh, so first I wanna uh, welcome Marcella to our board. Thank you so much for that thorough and excellent report. We're so thrilled you're joining us and part of our group. Um, you're gonna be great this whole year, I know it. So thanks for being here. Um, so as far as school opening, we had an incredibly successful opening in all of our schools. Principals reported um, um, very high enrollment for our Jumpstart program for the middle school and high school. Um, we, we have, um, I do have enrollment numbers if, if the board's interested in um, all our, our starting numbers for kids. Um, but we, um, uh, Ms. Cummings and I made our way around to all the schools uh, last week and saw kids um, fully engaged and teachers really happy to be in buildings. Um, so I can definitely report a successful school opening. Thank you. N Next, uh, safety and security update. So as I reported last month, um, all of our um, schools participated in um, applying for safe um, grants with Homeland Security. Um, this was a total of $476,000 that we submitted um, for um, improvements in our access and emergency alerting um, for our um, safety and security for our facilities. Uh, we should hear about the um, uh, results of those applications by November 1st, so I'll certainly keep the board posted. Next, we have an update on our ESSER fund, so I'll turn it over to Kathy O. Thank you. Um, there's not too much to report on. We're still in the midst of preliminary work with preliminary paperwork. I can tell you that our ESSER II funds have been um, completely allocated based on the uh, staffing for summer school and then for our two-year um, personnel that we've hired at all of the schools. So we'll have to be dipping into ESSER three just a little bit, but that will not cause any issues with the HVAC that we plan on using um, the rest of the ESSER three funds for. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. She can also talk about Primax. That's right. Keep, keep it going, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> so before you, um, there are um, two agreements with Primex. Primex is our property liability insurance carrier as well as workers' compensation, and they offer multi-year discounted programs. Um, property and liability is a cap, so in other words, we won't see more than a 7% maximum increase over the next three years. Um, this past year, there was not a cap in place, and the increase was um, more than 7%. Uh, I highly recommend that the board approve, they do have to vote and approve this um, um, contribution assurance program cap for the next three years. That'll keep our costs at a, uh, the minimum that we could lock into. Um, it is an excellent, an excellent idea, an excellent program. The other one is workers' compensation. And what it is, it's a 5% multi-year discount program agreement. Um, they have a maximum increase of 8% for the next um, year, um, but we also reap more benefits by having another property and liability package as well as the workers' compensation. So when it's again, we can certainly try to save costs by um, uh, locking into a compensation or a, a discount program through Primax. Thank you, Kathy. You're um, welcome. I, I strongly recommend that we uh, we do approve this. Uh, we've done this in the past. Uh, Primex is an excellent carrier. We've had excellent success with them, uh, and uh, it, it makes sense. It does uh, help us control what we uh, put into our budgets as well. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to lock in some rates. Discussion. Can yes. I have a question? I don't know. 
Um, just a question on how the um, the percentage increase cap is determined, or if that's negotiated, Kathy? It is not negotiated. It is established based on our ratio, our rate, our claims, um, our, yeah, just everything um, as well as the pool. It's a risk pool entity, therefore um, the, the, the costs are uh, divvied up among all of those who are in the pool, but this specifically um, is for us and the maximum uh, increase amount for property and liability does take into effect our previous claims, um, our exposures. Obviously, property and liability is our assets in the, in the districts so or assets. If they increased um, a tremendous amount, we might, I don't know if we would see a higher percent uh, maximum increase or not, but we have not had um, bad claims um, and our ratio is very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Brody? Uh, I was just going to make a motion that we accept the agreement. Okay. okay. And there are two, there are two, just to make sure. I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept both agreements. Yes, both for property liability and workers' comp. Uh, yeah. Moved by Brody. I right hear a second. Seconded by Jim Pittman. Uh, any further discussion? I, I just have one question. Is there any kind of... It, so obviously this is an offer. Do we ever get to make a counter offer? Is that ever an opportunity or is it basically whatever they offer us is for the most part what, what we're kind of expected to yes, accept? Yes, this is a non-negotiable. Okay. I'm sorry if I, nope. if I misheard something. No, nope, that's okay. It's been a long few couple of weeks. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, all those in, in favor, uh, we'll start down the end. Uh, Tom? Yes. Uh, Dana? Yes. Uh, Brody? Aye. Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chair votes aye as well. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Next uh, for my report job vacancy. So in your packet, we have uh, a flyer designed by our director of special education, Kelly Mask. Uh, we're highlighting our job vacancies. And this is something that we're being creative in communicating with our communities. Um, this is one way through talking about it at our board meeting. Um, we'll be sharing it with our parents and uh, community members um, through principals in an attempt to get the word out. We're flexible with hours. Uh, we still have some uh, positions open in all of our schools. Um, this is not unlike other districts across the state. We have superintendents who are um, compiling all the information as far as um, what vacancies still exist across the state of New Hampshire um, to, to highlight it and to work with the Department of Education um, to recruit more people to work with us in our schools. So we encourage people to go to our website, gwrsd.org, to find out all of our vacancies. Thank could, you. Could I just make one suggestion regarding the flyer? Sure. Jack, if that's... Go ahead, you're good. Um, I would just, well, two. One is mention our SAU number, so SAU 49, because that's not on the flyer, and also to put our website on the flyer. I noticed we didn't know, I think we should have our website pretty well bolded, mm -hmm. maybe even like the exact link for where they would find the jobs, because I know we have a specific page for it, so that might be pretty advantageous. Yes, I, I know the QR code does it, but not everyone always is the most tech savvy and understands how to utilize the QR code. <laughs> I, I, have tr I have trouble with that myself, Rody, thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you. Could I suggest uh, yes. one thing? Tom. Uh, next to the uh, schools that are located in Wolfboro, like Carpenter and Crescent Lake, possibly put Wolfboro in parentheses so people know what the location of the school is. It's not familiar. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. Okay, any other comments on the flyer? Excellent. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Um, when, yes. Well, just one thing for the public who are listening, what types of positions are we looking for? We're looking for paraprofessionals. We're looking for um, administrative assistance. We have a part-time library media specialist, um, and we're looking for substitutes. And bus drivers. And bus drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, finally in this report is the update on the Pop Whalen and Art Center <laughs> review. Um, Jack, Jim Pittman, and I, um, took a tour of the facility and um, brought your questions um, to the team. Uh, we've included in your packet um, the MOU, which we included last month,
But in addition, the project summary and business plan, Pop Whaling Ice Center, uh, Ice and Art Center, uh, I, I'll say that I um, certainly learned a lot as far as the, the broad scope of what uh, will be offered once the facility is completed and different options for the board with respect to um, um, whether it's uh, an investment that's, that's of interest to the board now or to spread it over um, several years. So um, we're happy to um, add any information if, if the board has, has questions. Yeah, if I may just say too, uh, the, uh, the MOU as presented um, probably was premature to be sent out the way it was. Um, there's, there's a lot more involved in the use of the facility than um, just ice hockey as it's sort of uh, indicated in the MOU. Um, the MOU is probably the easiest um, change in, the, in this process as far as what we think should be in it. Um, and uh, what the town of Wolfboro would accept within the agreement. Uh, I think the uh, going forward, um, we're looking for uh, the people that are involved with the uh, Friends of Pop Wellen uh, to provide us with uh, some real sales information on why this is a good idea. Um, the board, if the board goes along with the, the MOU in the process, again, whether it's a uh, a fixed cost to, to do this or whether we spread it out over a period of time. Uh, this would be a, a warrant article, I'm assuming, next March anyway. Um, but it, it's really going to de be determine um, how we, if the, if the board accepts this, how we sell it to the public around the district. This isn't just a Wolfboro facility. It's uh, intended for the use of all the students within Governor Wentworth. Um, but we have to know everything from the friends of Pop Whalen uh, to uh, make this presentation. Um, I kind of relate this a little bit to the way we did our road show when we did the Kingswood Complex. Um, we're asking the taxpayers for some money. Uh, we have to go out and believe in the project and we have to sell a project if we believe in it. So um, a lot more to come. Uh, this is not a, a decision making uh, process tonight. Um, there's a, a lot of work that has to be done both by, by us and the town of Wolfboro on the MOU, as well as uh, producing uh, information that is, uh, that will help us sell the project if it is something we believe in. So, uh, Charlene. Well, one question I have looking at the MOU, uh, it's my understanding that for the $250,000, um, Governor Wentworth would only be would only have access to the locker rooms dur specifically during the ice hockey season, yet the MOU says we are going to be responsible for any and all damage. And so it seems to me that, uh, first of all, uh, two points. First of all, if they're going to be opening the facility for more than just ice hockey, it seems to me that we should have, if there's a need for locker rooms, we should have the, um, the option of using them beyond just the ice hockey season. And secondly, if we are not going to be allowed to have those exclusively for school district use, then there, I think, should be something that says, oh, by the way, when you, when the, you, this particular licensee, are not using them, right. then you're not responsible for any theft or damage or whatever that happens when other people are being allowed to use it. Right. Th thank you, Charlene. Those, those are all comments that we shared with uh, uh, the friends of Pop Whalen and uh, the town manager in Wolfboro when we met with them. Uh, and those are certainly, uh, the, the comment basically was the, uh, the MOU was just a draft. Uh, and the, uh, the MOU would be written by the school district uh, to benefit the school district on a year-round basis. So you're, you're absolutely right. The MOU um, has a lot of information that uh, was produced as a draft, but really is not accurate, and that's why we're looking for much more information from uh, the town on the uh, the year-round facility, uh, what the school district potentially could use the facility for, uh, that the lockers would be um, controlled by the school district uh, 365 days a year. Uh, so there's a lot that has to go into what we think we need for an MOU, uh, and whether the town of Wolfboro would agree with our changes or not. Uh, and if they do, uh, then, but, there, but there's also additional costs involved in 
um, these locker rooms. The locker, these are locker rooms. They have nothing in them. So uh, our athletic director, I think, has put some numbers together um, for fitting up these locker rooms with lockers and, and other things that are needed. So in a, a complete cost of the, this project um, needs to be done. Uh, and uh, the, again, the sales material provided by the Friends of Pop are willing to uh, explain what the facility can be used for. You know, there are also uh, some meeting rooms within the facility that we have access to if uh, small groups wanted to meet there, say, uh, uh, you know, a group of um, students from the tech center uh, wanted to meet for a specific event. Um, if they wanted to have a robotics uh, tournament in there at some time of the year. So there is a tremendous amount of additional information uh, that has to be provided to us to help sell it um, as we move forward. So uh, I'm not proposing one way or the other whether we approve or disapprove uh, the, of the project uh, until more information uh, comes to us. And, and this is, yes, Sh uh, Stephanie. Yeah, we've basically given them, uh, give them, given them until November to get all the information back to us for, you know, what's the ice time cost, what's what's other uh, individual costs involved. If we rent it for, uh, say, baseball season to to practice indoors when the weather's bad, uh, before you know before the season starts, we need all those cost factors uh, so we can do our budget. So we basically given them to November um, as we were creating our our budgets. The, 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 MO, the MOU, we're gonna, we should, um, over the next few weeks, kind of rewrite the MOU to satisfy our needs and, and send that off to the uh, town of Wolfboro for their comments. So that would be in, within the next couple of weeks. And, and when, once we hear back from them again, if, uh, you know, if it's not acceptable, it's not acceptable, but um, you know, the, the, that's, we can negotiate the differences of opinions if there is any. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, without all the information, it's difficult to make recommendations. Right. We're, yeah, we're, we're kind of leading the up for the upfront stuff, and then the building and maintenance committee will get fully okay. involved in, in the process as well. Excellent. Thank you. Brody? Um, I, I was just wondering, did we ever get an idea of whether or not we can pay in multiple installations? We, can, we cannot. We cannot, so it needs to be a lump sum? Correct. Okay, so that's that's good to know. I don't know if I missed that. And I was also wondering, I noticed on the MOU, there's a section nine missing. Did they forget a section nine that's supposed to be in it? Because it goes from eight to 10. So I don't know if there's some kind of magic nine that they meant to include or if they just misnumbered it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm um, saying it's probably misnumbered, but we'll I, number I'm it. I'm assuming misnumbered, yeah. but you never know with these kinds of things, especially yeah. with how rushed and how incomplete this MOU yeah. was. Maybe when, they left yeah. out when something. We, when we rewrite it the way we want to rewrite it, we'll make sure the numbers okay. are correct. And so and I assume I'll follow up again um, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so I assume you and Caroline will you know, make some changes, some broad edits, and then we'll kind of do a work session as a building yeah. and maintenance committee and kind of Co come to something correct. that we'll bring to the rest of the school board? Correct. And what's kind of the timeline do we expect that to be? Well, I, I would say we'd, we'd have our MOU done by the next board meeting okay. uh, in October to, uh, to present. So before that, we'd have the Building and Maintenance Committee uh, meet to review and discuss that's uh, the changes. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Tom, I think I saw your hand go up. Yes, Jack. Um, am I on? Yeah. Sounds like. Um, I received a letter from a constituent regarding the uh, ice rink. Would this be the time to read it, or would you prefer to do that during public input? Um, you can, you, since we're in this particular uh, you know, item right now, you can certainly read it. Uh, again, remember that um, I think the concerns that, uh, I think you read that to me if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think the concerns uh, that he had would be addressed mostly through the MOU rewrite um, and the, the use of the facility on a year-round basis and all that. So, uh, but if you if you you think it's appropriate to read in, you, you can certainly read it in. Yes, I'd like to. Okay. Uh, hi, Tom. Thank you for volunteering to serve on the board. I am writing to you with concerns about what was discussed at the last meeting 
August 15, concerning the district needing to pay $240,000 for use of the locker rooms at Pop Will. Full disclosure, I did not vote to approve the bond for the ice rink, felt it was too high and that it was only going to benefit a small group of people or kids. We both know the outcome and that the town now needs to float the bond and the agreement was that the Friends of Park Whalen were going to fundraise to get the rest. My issues are, is this what the Friends of Park Whalen call fundraising by stating that the kids at Kingswood would, won't have to, won't have use of the locker room if they don't pay the money. If this is approved, it means the residents of Wolfboro are now paying more money than just the bond. Wendy Fenderson was correct in stating that she was concerned that the residents of New Durham or any other town were being asked to pay for something in Wolfboro. This money they are asking for is over and above what the district will have to pay for yearly use of the rink. We all want to support the sports at Kingswood, but I feel like we are being taken advantage of by the friends of Pop Whalen. I don't have to directly respond, you don't have to directly respond to each issue, but I wanted to let you know my thoughts and maybe they can be shared with the board. Thank you for your time. John Larson, 44 Johnson Road. Um, I don't endorse everything he says, but I uh, felt it was important to share. Th thank you, and, and as I said, a lot, a lot of his concerns would be, a, a, you know, uh, given attention to the re rewriting of the MOU. Uh, it's not just for hockey, obviously. Uh, one thing I will say is we did ask uh, when we were there um, about what if uh, this is a war warrant article uh, next March and it gets defeated by the uh, citizens of Governor Wentworth. Uh, what happens to the locker rooms? Um, the answer was a little flippant, I thought. Uh, well, they just won't get built, um, which is not true. They will get built. Uh, they may not be fitted with any equipment or any of that stuff. Um, and if we wouldn't, uh, if it's not approved, um, what would our options be? And we'd be able to use the locker rooms in the facility uh, during the hockey season, if that's the primary time to use them, uh, and pay the uh, going rate to use them. And But our, our students would not be able to keep any of their equipment in the locker rooms. They'd have to take them out after each game and, and, and all of that. So. Um, you know, it's 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 a process. Um, this is not uh, nothing's in in you know solid right at this point. Uh, we have to discuss this. We have to come up with the MOU. Uh, we have to put the pricing together for fitting up the locker rooms. Uh, get a complete package together and see if it's something that this board wants to support uh, and put a warrant article out there. That warrant article again could be uh, depending on on how it's presented, a one-time 50% uh, majority. Uh, if we want to pay it over a, a period of time uh, and we wanted to finance it, uh, that would be a 60% majority based on the fact that we're an SB2 district. So um, a lot more to come on this, on this whole process. this becomes a warrant article and it's not supported supported that it would still be built and we would right the lot the, lo the two locker rooms that we're looking at would not have the Kingswood identification on them they, you know there'd be no identity there when we go for a game we could use one of the general locker rooms unless they decided that you know these locker rooms would be best because of you know the the hockey process uh, would be better be, be strictly used for hockey anyway. They may have let us use them uh, on the uh, strictly per game, and then we take our equipment out. Um, so there's. I think the concern was, would it kill the hockey program? And, you're, and what I'm hearing is. Is no, no. Uh, no, it would not kill the hockey program. From what I gather, I think uh, what they what they basically said is, um, if that's the case, you, you know, you have use of the general locker rooms uh, when you have ice time assigned to you. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I think we'd be, we'd use the locker rooms the same way we did last year, um, whether they were ours 
strict, strictly ours or not, as long as we cleaned out those locker rooms at the end of each game. That's, that's my understanding of what was, what was said. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's enough on Papua Island for tonight. Um, I'll move on to my report. Um, I do have a few, um, actually quite a few sympathy uh, expressions that we've sent out. Um, we sent us uh, expressions of sympathy to the family of uh, Susan Riley, special education at the high school who passed away on 820. Uh, and we sent uh, to her son, Adam Riley, who's a bus driver uh, in Ossipi, uh, her, who's her son, uh, and to uh, Christine Senecal, uh, middle school DPT, who's a, who is her daughter. We also sent expressions of sympathy to the family of Joseph Bradley, um, Kingswood High School uh, Special Education Coordinator who passed away on 819, and sympathy uh, to Christina Damon, uh, para-educator in New Durham on the passing of her grandmother, Patricia Roy, a bus driver on the passing of her father, and uh, Miriam Baudet, Baudet, I guess, a bus driver on the passing of her father as well. Um, I did receive a, uh, a letter for discussion uh, from the uh, police chief in New Durham uh, about access to the uh, video system in New Durham. And um, we'll, uh, we'll have to discuss that uh, with the superintendent really to see um, how that's set up. I'm not going to respond to it uh, tonight, uh, but something that we will uh, we'll get back to the uh, chief in New Durham uh, as soon as we figure out exactly uh, what, what can be done. Right now, the access to the video system uh, is only available uh, to the SRO at the Kingswood High School and the Wolfboro Police Department, but the uh, but they don't have jurisdiction in New Durham uh, on something that happened within that school. So uh, right now, the in, uh, in yeah in the, the the video system in New Durham, the police chief in New Durham does not have access to those those videos. So we'll we'll discuss that and figure out a prop the proper process on that. Um, I think that's all I have for this evening. Um, Let's move on to committee reports, uh, academic affairs. Thank you, Jack. This evening we had a slew of policies that we were looking at. And uh, if you look at the agenda, um, I believe at the last board meeting, EGAE <coughs> and JGAR were up for first read. And tonight uh, we're actually going to look for approval of the, the first two policies. Uh, the first one is uh, Employee Volunteer Computer Network Acceptable Use Agreement. And the second one is the Internet Acceptable Use Agreement for Students. Um, there were a number of suggestions made at the previous Academic Affair Affairs Committee meeting for um, you know, slight modification, and those were all taken care of. And so tonight, I am looking for approval uh, with no, there were no substantive changes. So I'm looking for approval for EGAE as well as JGAR. Are you making the motion to approve those two? I will make the motion that we approve EGAE and e JGAR. Okay, moved by Charlene. Any? Seconded, but this is a second read. I just realized that. Yes, it, say, it does say first read on the. Right. Let's. Yeah, it's actually a second read. Uh, well, well, let's. I'll, I'll, I'll ask for a motion to change the first read to second read so uh, on the agenda. Uh, seconded. Okay. To second read. <laughs> second read on the, the agenda for both uh, um, EGAE and JGAR. So th there's a few other changes of the, the read count. So these two are second reads. Um, C is a, um, that's a, that's correct, but D through I will not be brought for a first read. Correct. I was about to get correct. to that. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if we want to lump that into one. I think it would might be clear if we did those separately. Yep. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's motion on the floor to change first read to second read on EGAE and JGAR. Um, all those in favor of moving those to a second read? Signify saying aye. Aye. I won't do it. Read on that. 
Okay. Uh, any opposed to that? Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. So Charlene uh, made the motion. Do I did I hear a second? Yes, Stephanie, I believe. Yes. Okay. Stephanie seconded the uh, motion to approve EGAE and JGAR um, as presented with, uh, I think there were a few minor grammatical changes uh, in those, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Tom? Yes. Uh, Dana? Yes. Uh, Brody? Aye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stephanie? Yes. Sorry. Charlene? Aye. Jim Pittman? Aye. And Chair votes aye as well. Okay. Moving right along to uh, item C, BEDH, public participation at board meetings. And in light of, we, we discussed that at length, and in light of the fact that our superintendent just attended a webinar today specific to that, I would like to defer to her to uh, cover this particular policy. My pleasure, thank you. So public participation at board meetings currently in our policy, uh, we have public input will not exceed 15 minutes. Uh, however, the New Hampshire rule just changed that districts must um, offer a total of 30 minutes. Um, so we have this policy here for you for first read tonight, just for information, uh, with the understanding that um, we're going to be uh, revising this. Certainly to be changing um, the total um, public input uh, will be a minimum of 30, will be offered a minimum of 30 minutes. Um, we also discussed that um, speakers may be limited to three minutes rather than five minutes to allow more speakers um, to participate in public comment um, than previously. Um, the committee also discussed um, written remarks um, in allowing um, comments to be uh, submitted to the SAU uh, one business day prior to a board meeting and uh, provided it follows all the um, other guidelines and rules uh, for public comment, those would also be read into um, the um, into the meeting. Um, so those are some of the things that we discussed, and we'll put those into um, into uh, a draft policy for our next meeting. Thank you. And as, as Stephanie noted, we. Um, brought forward our handful of policies on policies. And uh, what we are gonna be doing for uh, items D through I, I'm not gonna enumerate them because I get tongue-tied with all the letters. We're going to be looking at those further for clarity and consolidation because we felt that a number of them uh, could be condensed so they would be a little, little have, you know, make more sense and, uh, and save trees. So those uh, we will be bringing back for first read, I believe, at the next meeting. Yeah, thank you, Charlene. Uh, okay, next up is uh, building and buildings and maintenance. Uh, Jim Pittman. Okay, that's okay. No, no report, okay. Um, I will not have a report for finance or human resources tonight either. Um, so we'll move right on to advanced planning. And if you look on the back of your sheet, um, the middle school open house is uh, tomorrow the 14th. Right, tomorrow? No, Wednesday the 14th. Uh, the high school and LRTC open house is the 15th. 21st is Crescent Lake. 22nd is Carpenter, Effingham, and Tufton Borough, and the 28th is New Durham and Ossipee. And our next school board meeting is on 10-3, and it's in the, ta the town hall in Brookfield at seven o'clock. Okay, chance for uh, public input again. Anybody like to speak um, for public input tonight? Okay, seeing, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, closing comments by board members. Um, let's start down the end. Tom, any, uh, any comments tonight? No, nope, not tonight. Okay, Dana. No. Brody, can't imagine you don't have something to say. <laughs> I, I just wanted to congratulate um, Mar Marcella on assuming the duties and being elected by her peers to be on the board. And I was once in your shoes, so hopefully this is something that you take. Um, you know, very uh, 
courageously and that you continue on in the future in your life. I also want to remind everyone, and I know this won't be published online until after the election, but get out and vote. It's important, you know, so make sure you're having your voice heard in the political process and voting is the most effective way to do that. So. Thank you, Brody. Stephanie, anything? Uh, just echo welcome, Marcella. We're so excited that you're here. Um, and um, thank you so much for all the faculty and staff that went into having the opening of school go so smoothly. Charlene. Well, I'd like to echo the uh, comments previously made, and I would also like to say that um, I was deeply honored to have the opportunity today at our new staff reception to meet the, the new faces and see a lot of returning faces as well, uh, but meet our new staff members. And of course, uh, Chef Bordeaux and his students provided a, a lovely um, batch of appetizers. And uh, it's, it's, it's always a really exciting time of the year for everyone to come back to school and to see our, our new, you know, new professionals on board. So that was that was a real treat. And um, additionally, on a, on a different note, I would, I'd like to say that um, I took the opportunity to watch on uh, YouTube TV uh, or on YouTube the last board meeting, so I could, you know, get up to speed and understand what I missed. And I understand it was held at Crescent Lake School. And I, I, want, I want to apologize to everyone who had, had difficulties with the audio. Um, I know that there, there was a, a physical issue, I think, with some interference. But um, to me, it, it's such a pleasure and such a treat for us to have individual microphones so that you know, we know that we're being heard by our constituents and you know, heard clearly. So I was, I was one of you folks trying to watch it on TV and, and bless YouTube and their attempts at closed captioning. It, it didn't always help, but I'm very much hopeful that at our next meeting in Brookfield, we will be able to have um, individual mics for that particular meeting because I think it makes a lot of difference. And um, you know, I will, I will be addressing this at our Wolfboro Community Television meeting next Wednesday. And thank you all. Thank you, Charlene. Jim. Hey. Okay, thank you very much. On the subject of mics, uh, Charlene, I think it's, uh, it is also great that we have them here. But I also say maybe Scott sometime can give us a little uh, five minute tutorial on uh, microphone usage. Uh, most of us don't use microphones as uh, part of our everyday life. So, you know, sometimes you're like way far away, people can't hear you. And uh, sometimes you're like way too close. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, a, l a little practice at that would go a long way to be sure we, we're all heard. Um, but yeah, great to have them. Um, also like to s welcome our new student rep. Great to have you here. Uh, speaking for myself, um, I feel like I'm a step removed from what goes on in the schools every day. So it's, it's always great to hear uh, what's happening at the student level and I uh, really encourage you to keep bringing those uh, reports forward to us. Uh, it's, uh, it's important. Thank you. Again, thank you and, and thank you for being here. Um, one thing I, I did uh, neglect to say in the beginning of the meeting, and I, I uh, want to do it now, uh, Wendy Fender Fenderson is not here tonight because she's traveling for business. Just wanted to make sure that people knew that she was hoping to be here but couldn't get back in time for the meeting. And uh, Dr. Jim Manning uh, was not feeling well today and thought it best that he uh, stay home and uh, not be here uh, to infect anyone else. So, uh, but again, those, those two were hoping to be here, but uh, certainly couldn't make it, but wanted to put that on the record. Um, Marcella, you have anything that you'd like to comment on? No, I just wanna thank everyone for making me feel so welcome, and um, I'm really excited to start this journey with you all. Thank you very much. Kelly, anything? Okay. Um, Okay, if, uh, if there's no, nothing else, uh, I'd entertain a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A, colon three, paragraph two, for legal, personnel, and student matters. Moved by, <laughs> moved by Brody. Uh, seconded by? I'll second. Oh, uh, no, no, I, 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 I saw Stephanie, I, I saw Stephanie really wanted to do it. 
All right. Um, okay, all those in favor, Tom. Aye. Uh, Dana. Aye. Brody. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Uh, Charlene. Aye. Jim. Yes. Chair votes aye. We are now in non-public. Uh, we're going to go in the other uh, classroom, so um, we don't have to keep, unless somebody specifically wants to stay uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour to see us come back uh, for uh, to, to officially adjourn the meeting. Um, I'll ask that uh, we don't have, the, have to keep the uh, video going at this point, uh, but we will come back in to adjourn the meeting regardless of whether it's recorded or not. And if anyone's here, they can verify that we adjourn the meeting officially. Okay, great, we are in non-public. <laughs>